Evening YouTubers, so it's been a while. Um, I've been busy doing my computer science degree, doing two units, so that's part-time work, full-time, sorry, part-time uni, full-time work, and um, yeah, so it's been keeping me busy, and I haven't been able to do the type of uh, video content that I'd like to do, but uh, rather than quit the game altogether, I thought I'd take a little bit of a hiatus, and, uh, and then get back to it while uh, semester's out. Uh, schools out for summer as they like to say um, at least it's summer in this neck of the woods so I know that if you're in the United States which a lot of my viewers are uh, you're going to be on the other side of the uh, the seasons so um, anyway uh, so what I have here is I've got Fedora 29 and um, so let's just take a look at some of the detail here uh, ignore that beautiful screen there which will just uh, move out of the way right away um, anyway so it's one of those beautiful things about um, GNOME Shell and it's, uh, it's window management. I can't actually force it down until I've got, I uh, can't force that window down until I've got another window up. Um, but uh, anyway, if we go into settings, uh, we'll see here and we go into about. Um, so what have I got here? So obviously Fedora 29. Um, this machine here is my daily driver. I'm not on my test bench today. Uh, we've got uh, almost 16 gig of RAM. Um, we've got uh, the uh, Intel Core um, i7 4770 now, which is starting to age, I guess. Still performs pretty well, so whatever. Um, we've got the AMD Pitcan, uh, which is why you see this beautiful Radeon graphics uh, running perfectly fine uh, on Fedora. Admittedly, with uh, some firmware that Fedora um, provides, which in turn is actually actually provided by AMD. But anyway. I digress, and we're on GNOME version 3.30.2. Um, so that means that uh, for today we'll be not showcasing KDE or any of the other desktops. Uh, we won't be uh, specifically showcasing any KDE apps. It'll be all the uh, applications that you uh, would normally expect from the typical use cases on GNOME. So, um, so basically, what do we know about this? Well, the support cycle for uh, Fedora is uh, six months. Um, uh, the end of life is uh, six months after the new release. That is to say, um, say we have a particular release, it lasts for six months itself until a new release comes along, but then there's extended support um, for six months after, typically. So uh, when will Fedora 29 reach end of life? Well, if we just um, take a look at the, uh, the details on Wikipedia. So let's have a look at wikipedia.org and we'll go to the Fedora website. Fedora web page. Choose that, and uh, we look at the uh, history. Um, we don't have any uh, ETA on end of life here. We can see that release is uh, October. Um, so I mean, uh, best guesstimate is maybe around November 2019. We'll reach uh, end of life, and uh, Fedora. Uh, 30 should arrive in May 2019, but we, you know, there's no guarantees on this, so you, you know, take it or leave it. Uh, whether that really happens, so why would you use Fedora? Okay, what's the, what's the compelling uh, reason to use Fedora? Well, um, look, I've been using it for the last uh, four or five days, and I've been using it for the typical use cases like web browsing. So I've been using Firefox. So, you know, you just saw me use Firefox just then and uh, that's a very competent web browser, although not as popular as it once was um, in, I suppose in lieu of using Chrome or, uh, or Chromium uh, from Google you can use Firefox and that will serve you uh, in most cases perfectly fine uh, with a very few exceptions. Um, the email I actually have hooked up uh, um, not a personal email but uh, the one that I use for my uh, GNU Plus Linux activities and uh, we've got Evolution here so um, and I suppose it, uh, it might be worthwhile saying what version of Firefox we were using before. Let's just go back here, and uh, oh, it's uh, been in this menu for a while uh, about Firefox. So we're using, yeah, we're using Firefox Quantum, which is this. Uh, I think it was it use. I'm not sure. I've got an idea. It might use Rust as its development platform or something, but I'm not really, I'm not really sure. Um, so let's have a look. At, we've got uh, in here. We've got. Um, in evolution, we've got a couple of features that you should be aware of. A few, you've got the mail, obviously. Um, you've got uh, contacts if you want to manage contacts. I don't have any contacts to show here. Again, this is just for my GNU Plus Linux activities. Um, 
I've got tasks and uh, memos. So it's uh, it's pretty decent. I mean, I can just go in here and uh, create something in the calendar. So let's just do that. Let's just say I'll uh, uh, put this uh, GNU plus. Oh, that was a bit uh, a bit screwy. There. That's my keyboard actually messing up there. I think GNU uh, plus Linux review, and we'll just save that. I notice these icon sets now have these funny down arrows to mean save, uh, which is pretty interesting. And uh, you can see here, um, this came up here, but my uh, change to it didn't. But uh, nonetheless, you can see events that are upcoming in here. I'm not sure whether you can do much in turn. In, well, maybe we can just have a... No, we can't really do much. It's just a notification there. So that's fine. Um, now, in terms of mail, it's perfectly competent. And uh, when I say perfectly competent, I really mean it. I've got 32,000 emails that are there. And it turns out that it, uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty responsive. Uh, when you've got 32,000 emails and it's just responding so quickly, I don't think you can complain too much. Um, that's compared to Thunderbird, which I think is a little bit on the laggy side at times. Um, so what else have we got here? We've got LibreOffice. Now that's the, the usual suspects with uh, LibreOffice. Uh, I suppose I've got some... Maybe I've got uh, some... Uh, oh, look at this. This is... So you can see here you can do nice formula and that kind of thing. I've just been doing a little bit of work in there, just trying to get my head around some topics. Um, so we're running uh, LibreOffice uh, 6.1.2 there, uh, and that's been working perfectly fine. I've had no bugs, issues, or other other things. Things look a little bit nice and fresher in this um, uh, in this release with these uh, this icon set. If you go into Tools and Options and and take a look in the view, you can see that uh, I've got this elementary icon set which is uh, coming about. Also, if you just notice out here before, you, if you look in here, you'll see that there are no icons, but I've just noticed an, an option the other day that uh, you can just go and show um, you know, show the, uh, the, the menu um, uh, icons there and uh, they actually look pretty pretty nice really. So it's looking pretty sweet. I, I'm thinking I might keep that for now. Um, so uh, moving right on, uh, you've got uh, events uh, which you can use for, for, viewing, um, for viewing documents. Uh, now uh, while I make mention of uh, events, uh, I do have a document um, here, as I said uh, before I've got this document here, I can just uh, save it as a PDF and we'll just uh, view that uh, in events. So it's nice and quick, I mean this is running on a solid state drive but everything's nice and quick. This is events here uh, showing this uh, quadratic solution proof document that I uh, had before in the uh, value of golden ratio and uh, that's pretty cool. So uh, it's looking uh, all pretty sweet here with regards to uh, accessing your documents. Of course, uh, if you go back into uh, LibreOffice, you can uh, save as uh, a, you know some sort of um, Microsoft file if you if you want to. You can use the Office Open XML files. Uh, I tend not to use those, um, but you I mean you can, and uh, it should work reasonably well provided your formatting's not too uh, too far out there. Um, so I guess the next thing to consider, and I'm not going to go through it too much, but uh, you do have the photo viewer uh, and or organizer, uh, which is uh, photos, <laughs> imaginary, imaginative naming here, photos, and uh, yeah, you can see here I've got no photos that I've done this time, but uh, I'm sure next time, in fact, why not, let's see if I can actually find some photos, um, let's, I don't know if I can open here, yeah, open some photos. Uh, perhaps I should have put them in the, the uh, photo folder. Okay, so I haven't put any in the pictures folder. So if I go back into home and I look into the screencast kit that I maintain, uh, maybe I've got some pictures or something like that. Let's just copy that and uh, throw that in the... Yeah, let's just throw that in the pictures and see what happens. And there we go, it, it appeared perfectly fine there. So, yeah, it's, you know got no albums or anything like that, but, uh, you know, it, I mean, it, it's going to do the job. Uh, I'm not looking for, um, you know, uh, one of those expensive proprietary uh, photo management apps. I'm just uh, going to be uh, attempting to uh, look at my photos every so often, uh, pretty, pretty much if other people want them in the family. Um, now, in terms of music management, you've got Rhythmbox. Okay, now I haven't got uh, any music here at the moment, but you can, if you want to, just connect to, like, Libre FM. Um, uh, I think you can connect to Jamendo if you really want to. I don't um, have that at the moment. What about Last FM? Got radio. You got these other bits and bobs. But you, if you had your music in there, uh, you could. The 
you could have it, but uh, the, the issue here is Codex. Now, Fedora has never been particularly strong with Codex. I mentioned last time I did a Fedora review that they've got um, MP3 support now, um, and that's all uh, fine. And, um, but the fact of the matter is that, you know, people are less and less using MP3 using other formats, such as Advanced Audio Codec, I think it's called, AAC. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you've got... Uh, it's not the best, is it? I mean, it's not the best situation if you're using Fedora out of the box. Now, admittedly, in this system, you might have even noticed at the moment I've got um, I've got uh, MPV Media Player in there, which means, hey, guess what? I either compiled it or I got it from uh, RPM Fusion, and in this case, I got it from RPM Fusion. So you can do that, but just remember, RPM Fusion is a third-party provider of software. Uh, indeed, apparently, some of the um, developers from um, RPM Fusion are actually Fedora developers, but you're not actually getting that that formal support from Fedora and Red Hat. So yeah, it's a, it's one of those things that, you know, take it or leave it. So you've got uh, good old Thuna here, which is now called Videos. And I think if you actually go into help on... Oh, not Thuna, sorry. We've got uh, Totem uh, uh, Movie Player. I don't know why I called it Thuna. That's the uh, the file manager, I think, on uh, XF X XFC4. Um, yeah, so anyway, we've got uh, Totem in here. And, um, and Totem has always had that... Uh, that kind of issue of are you able to, you know, view videos that are missing codec, you know, the codecs are missing and whatnot. Getting rid of um, uh, Rhythmbox here, let's just focus our attention on it and just see if we can uh, get something good out of it. Um, so if I go into the screencast kit and, I don't know, let's open this, open the videos. Yeah, and it's going to ask for HT64 because guess what? I transcoded it in HT64. So, you know, that's it's one of the disappointing features in Fedora. You're going to have to go away and get um, H.264 support via GStreamer. If you want to indeed use Totem, or you probably just use VLC, um, which will pull in um, its own set of codecs and the ones from FFmpeg, if I remember correctly. Okay, so moving right along, cloud storage. Now, these days, cloud is, I guess, the rage. I mean, you've heard of containerization and stuff like that. But, you know, that's a different rage. I mean, that's for different reasons, but... Guess what? I just discovered, and it's been around since I think about 2017-ish, or um, version GNOME 3.18, I think. Um, I'm not exactly sure how it implements it. I know that when I logged in the first time, it asked me for my accounts, and I gave it the Nix user account uh, on Gmail, and uh, and since then it's it's had uh, connectivity to um, to my uh, to my account on Drive, which is uh, great. I mean, obviously the e email was integrated before, but you can see I've got a few uh, bits and bobs here that I've put here, including the documents that I, uh, I created regarding quadratic proof. Um, so yeah, uh, it's a little bit on the slow side. Um, I don't know whether I can access things if I'm, in fact, see now I've got these files here. If I go and disconnect my, um, uh, if I disconnect my connection, let's see what happens if I try and open one of these files. So, got this guy, and it won't do it, you see? it's. Yeah, so it's still, I mean, that was one of those limitations that they mentioned in the documentation that I read, is you don't have um, offline uh, access uh, to the Google Drive stuff. So if we go and put that and connect it again, we take our wireless settings in uh, NM Applet, I think that, I presume that would be NM Applet or, or similar for GNOME, and then we right click and go open, and ta-da, it's there. So that's a little bit of a disappointment that you can't access those files offline once you've synchronized um, their uh, location. Um, but I'll try and research if I can. I mean, there are, on other systems such as Ubuntu, there was um, uh, there was a Google uh, Drive OCaml type uh, uh, a library that they were using, but I don't know much about that. Um, other use cases for the Fedora. Now, obviously, Fedora um, does have a tendency to showcase its virtualization technology, and if we go into boxes. Uh, we can see some pretty interesting stuff here. If we go into new, now you know that we've, we can create a virtual machine from there. But what the other thing that they've got in here is RDP. I think that's a relatively recent um, addition, is uh, adding an RDP uh, remote connection. And uh, RDP is that uh, type of bit streaming protocol, as opposed to VNC, which is a... Uh, which is a pixel scraping protocol. This bit streaming protocol, RDP, is the one that they use on Windows for remote connections, uh, not to be confused with such as ICA and SPICE. Uh, SPICE, which is used on uh, KVM virtual machines and uh, using Vert Manager, for example, and um, and VNC being the old school way. Although I've had, you know, I've been using Tiger VNC in recent times, and Tiger VNC has been pretty performant, but it's a side issue again. I digress. 
So you've got the RDP there, and of course you can uh, install these other distributions, of, including they've got Fedora. That's really odd. They've got Fedora 27 workstation. You think they catch up with the times. Um, but yeah, anyway, you can download an OS. Oh, what have we got here? And they've got 28 workstation. What about 29? So, yeah, it's kind of a funny one. And they've got the Red Hat Enterprise Linux there, which you kind of expect as well. And yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty nifty. And I suppose they've got this net install in here to uh, minimize the download because you just want a core image. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much here uh, where I'd, I'd draw a line there. I don't want to go into too much further detail, but uh, what would I recommend uh, this used for? I'd say, you know, daily driver, that kind of thing, as long as you're willing to take on uh, additional software from RPM Fusion or compile it yourself, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. It's a pretty schmick um, uh, distribution. The only thing I can say with some certainty is that you won't be able to screencast if you're using Wayland unless you use the Green Recorder. I'm not using the Green Recorder at the moment, I'm using Xorg. Uh, X11, and uh, you can see things have been still pretty performant, if that is such a word, uh, on this uh, distribution. So, anyway guys, I'm going to leave it right here. If you like this video, please uh, press the like button, or alternatively the dislike button, and uh, if you want to see more of this content, press subscribe. It was good to get another video out there, guys, and I hope you uh, stay tuned, and uh, hopefully we'll have some more uh, content in the coming weeks. Alright guys, bye now.